Hey all, welcome to the CIO PCC in this week's collection, favorite collection video. This is the outside of the CIO PCC. Oftentimes people say, hey, it's a uh, cool room. Well, no, it's actually a sound building. That building is uh, 25 feet by 50 feet. 1,250 square feet of toy fun. So when we walk here in the front, I was going to do a uh, new introduction video that I actually walked through in some detail each section. Uh, by the time I got to the third section, I was already like 45 minutes in, and I decided that's insane. So that's not going to happen. We are going to walk around. I'll give you some overview. We'll talk about some of the things people ask about. But uh, I'm going to end up redoing 11 new videos to cover each of the 11 sections. That's right, each of the 11 sections, because... The Institute is split into 11 pieces, color-coded. Now you'll notice there's blue here by the door. Wall space is uh, for, for hanging pictures, puzzles, advertisements, is a short supply. So this is the best spot to do it here by the door. I use blue for that. But each one of the other sections is some color related to a theme. So we'll go through each of those 11 sections fairly quickly and what they represent. First of all, I want to talk about dust. I get this all the time. How do you keep away from dust? So first, I have a couple of these. These are Corsi Rosenthal air filters. You can build these for like 80 bucks. Uh, you replace the filters every six months or so. These things work fantastic, as well as a four or $500 air purifier. Uh, highly recommend it, especially if you're on a budget like I am. So make sure uh, you get good filters. That's the key couple of these. I also use uh, my furnace filters. Uh, those are running regularly. Those help clean the air as well as a dehumidifier, which you'll see later. That is critical in general because if anything is going to ruin your figures, it's going to be humidity. Well, sun too, but we'll talk about that. So make sure that you clean that air. You'll also notice that in the building, there is no upholstery. There's no cats and dogs. There's no carpeting. I never sweep with a vacuum. All of that stuff causes dust. The uh, in and out is very limited. It's limited to that door, which you can see is in its own little cubby. And the windows are never open. So that cuts down on the dust. Sure, you still have to dust occasionally, but you'd be shocked by just doing those things, how much it cuts back on the dust. So let's start with the green section. The green section is adventure. So three main licenses in adventure. Lord of the Rings, a lot of the Asmus stuff in here. All the gentle giant busts. I tend to be a completist, so most of the time you'll see things that are complete collections like these busts. And Harry Potter. Those are the three main licenses that you're going to find in the green section. Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. You'll see that in the two um, uh, setups in front. These two towers. They are uh, three by four of these towers. That means each shelf is 12 square feet. Of display space or one tower is 60 square feet all together we got about 150 square feet in the green section alone which translates for those of you who are interested to uh 34 detolfs just in the green section here the top shells are 22 inches the floor is 22 inches it allows me to have space to put things like quarter scale figures larger stuff up on top over here, you're going to start to see a little more expansion of what adventure is. There's some Harryhausen uh, claymation stuff. Lots of pirates. There's the full set of the Hot Toys pirates. More Harry Potter. This is the Popco line. More Pirates of the Caribbean from different companies. And the Mattel Harry Potter line is in this section. Game of Thrones. Count that in the adventure section. And this 3-0 set of six scale figures is really underappreciated. Terrific series. Hoping we get some more. I even put Monty Python over here. Hey, it's a comedy, but I don't have a comedy section. So it goes into the adventure section. You can say a lot of bad things about Sideshow when you want to, but you know what? Their Monty Python and the Holy Grail line is an exact, excellent example that once they got a line, they really worked that line. Next up, let's look at a window. So here's a window. Split the color between the green and the gray. The gray is going to be Batman. The window... Uh, has a blackout curtain on it. Again, sun is terrible, but the reason sun is terrible is because of UV, and on the window itself, on the glass, is a film to cut out 99% of the UV light coming in. 
Gray is Batman. See the Mondo Man Bat up there? The tweeter had statues atop, one of my favorite things. And this gray color works terrific with the Batman black and white statues, which you can see along these shelves. Another thing I'm complete on. At least in terms of uh, any unique artist. I didn't get every remake, every re-release of, uh, of the same statue with a slightly different uh, variation in paint. But I gave all of the unique artists. Odds and ends in the Batman line down here. A couple of flat world figures there. Funko. And likewise at the bottom we have a lot of 12 inch figures. Larger stuff. Especially box stuff. And there's even some high tops over there. In front of it, we have another one of the large towers. I'm going to walk around this side so you can see that tower from a different angle. This tower is the largest tower in here. It is 4x8, or 4x6, four 4x6. By six, four by six. So each shelf is uh, 24 square feet. It allows me to uh, have a lot of stuff. Statues and busts on the top two shelves. Comic uh, or uh, cover girls are up there. Uh, the um, bombshells, complete collection of the bombshells are up there. A lot of hot toys, a lot of six scale, including both the Tumblr and the uh, Burton Batman Batmobile. You can see the Batman Returns theme around this side the nicholson joker we get into some suicide squad the mondo stuff and a lot of 66 batman collectibles you know i never thought we'd see all of this mattel started it nicely with their series and i have to say i'm really happy with mcfarland with what they've done with it now the next section up is the red section i'll give you a, uh it's one of the two largest sections it was supposed to be DC, so you'll notice there's a Superman shelf here, but most of it ended up being Batman, because I collect a lot of Batman. There's a lot of box Batmobiles there, you'll notice. A lot of Batman lines. So it's sort of DC adjacent. There's all of the Kenner Hasbro, or Kenner actually, animated Batman stuff that Hasbro took over. And on the large 3 by 8 Shelf in front of it, we have, again, more quarter scale, more boxed stuff, including bat caves and Batmobiles. DC Universe Classics. I am complete there, except for Naked Cheetah. That's one I'm keeping my eyes out for. Someday I'll hit the lottery and I'll pick that one up. Justice League Unlimited. Also fairly complete on this, but I've never really gone and checked. And we know how many wild and wacky different... Um, variations they did those are all dc direct and then we've got some batman brave and the bold when we come around the other side you'll see that we finish up with uh, the batman on the bottom some more dc direct lots in the mattel multiverse you can get a lot of action figures on a three by eight shelf And lots of DC Universe. Like I said, pretty complete on that. I did something unique with this top shelf because I had so many Batmobiles. I did an angled shelf so I could angle them and you could see them pretty easily. More of the DC Universe. And I used the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles playset to display three rows of them up there. Signature series is, of course, part of the evolution of DC Universe. And all of the DC Direct Batman stuff, including the Batmobile. And if you hadn't noticed, the Batplane hanging from the ceiling. Superpowers. I'm almost complete there. I do need three still. And yes, Cyborg is one of them. I did not try to get a complete carded collection. I ended up with more of them carded than I actually intended. But down below, you'll notice that we do have all of the vehicles loose along with... A number of the other figures, some Batman Mego. Like I said, over this side, we had some of the DC Direct. I have to have some wall space here for the comic book. That's the first uh, first appearance, Harlequin. 
Now that three by eight, that's a L, two three by eight shelves. On the other side, we have more Batman Returns, the rest of the DC Direct uh, base, uh, Batman animated series, which I'm also, that's a complete series I have. And some more of the Mattel multiverse that morphed down into the DC universe. And finally, we get to some Mattel. Now, the next section is blue, and that was supposed to be Mattel. Or Mattel. Marvel. So now you can see we've got some quarter-scale Marvel, some Build-A-Figures, Fin Fang Foom, up here on the top shelf. And really, the only other Marvel we got is over here on the blue wall itself. And it's 90% Hot Toys. I loved Hot Toys work with Marvel. I don't buy as much of it now, but I certainly bought a lot of it back in the day. I do love that Falcon is uh, Captain America. It's one of the newer editions. You see, I don't need another Captain America, as you can see. You'll see in a minute that I don't need another Iron Man. What I need is more oddball, one-off characters, which is why the most recent edition here is King Valkyrie. There you can see her with the rest of the Thor figures. That's what I like to get. The unique oddballs. I have so much Batman, some of it, Justice League ended up making it over here. And when I said I have enough Iron Man, you're going to start to see what I'm talking about. I only bought the one Doctor Strange. It's just I didn't think that there was a need for any others. And the rest of them, they did knock my socks off. Well, on the other hand, I think I have every Black Widow they've done. And I have plenty of Iron Man. We're kind of going in reverse order here. All the way back down to the Mark I. You might ask, where's the toy biz? I got rid of almost all of it. I did keep a lot of the Hulk and Green Goblin stuff. But for the most part, I got rid of all the toy biz. Oh, and I kept all the build figures, as you saw above. And down here, we have some of the more unusual Marvel stuff. These were the 12-inch ones they did. Toy biz did these originally, and then when Hasbro took over, they just kept them going. And down on the floor, we have a few unique items. Batman Begins is over here because I needed some place to put the box, box version. One of the coolest playsets is this Batman Forever playset with both Batmobile and the uh, Batplane on it. Really cool set. If you were a kid and you had this, you had the bomb, man. And there's another window, including the superpowers puzzle above it separating the blue and the red so let's see here we're cruising right along let's talk about what's next next is pink pink was because i was running out of colors by the time i got here while it's you know the fourth one we've looked at it's actually um the last section i did pink is miscellaneous and i was running out of color selections by the time i got over here this is just odds and ends you know you've got uh, audrey hepburn in here uh with the phantom these Ghostbusters, there is an actual Ghostbusters section. We'll get to that. But I had these over here. Turtles. Bruce Lee. The Big Lebowski. Here we sort of have a whole line of criminals. Including when we get down over here to the Sons of Anarchy. James Bond, this is the Sideshow line. There's one more of these I want to pick up. I don't have every one of them, but I did want to get all of the villains, and Teehee is the only one of the villains I'm missing. There's a couple of the Bond versions I still want to pick up. Hot Toys Rocky. And music in six scale. Watchmen in different versions. Some more Turtles. Not a huge Turtles fan, but... I have some of the cooler stuff, at least that I thought was the cooler stuff. Some Dr. Evil, Kill Bill. A 
And we finish off with a little more Austin Powers and some box stuff, including some Lego sets. I pick up Lego when it's unusual. Now, in front of it, we have some more towers. If you're thinking miscellaneous, you're definitely thinking uh, like holiday stuff. So you're going to see there's various rank and bass, holiday stuff, Christmas. Up above, we have some more of the 70s cartoons, Fred Flintstone. Speed Racer, there's some prototypes mixed in there. Even Johnny Quest. Miscellaneous, I figure Tron kind of fits in there, but also what we're going to start moving into in Spawn, what we're going to start moving into is science fiction as well. One of my favorite things in the entire museum, my uh, two-ups for the Mezco... Um, Captain Nemo line. Nightmare Before Christmas. And, of course, some more boxed stuff for the holidays. So that's really kind of miscellaneous, which starts taking us into the silver section. So there's kind of some bleed over between the two. Silver tends to be science fiction. So down along the bottom again, we got some of that box stuff. Down there at the end is Roddy the Robot. Who, did you know, even made an appearance on Columbo? He had different legs on Columbo, but it was Robbie the Robot from the waist up. XO6 in their terrific Star Trek line. There's some of it here. You're going to see some more of it. Kind of separated out by show. Hot Toys Terminator. Plenty of Hot Toys Terminator. Twilight Zone. Aliens, you're going to see all the aliens and predators in here. More of the X-06. There's the Voyager and the Deep Space Nine. Star Trek, of course. These are the 9-inch. And up on that 24-inch shelf, I use it to do a double wall of 12-inch figures. I do this a few different times. Really can pack in the figures. you got everything from Star Trek to Doctor Who. On the tower in front of that, you're going to get some more of it. Now, there's as part of the miscellaneous... We got some of the Seventh Kingdom from Four Horsemen. You'll see some more of that around the other side. Some quarter scale figures up on top, both from Sideshow and from NECA. Hellboy is part of my miscellaneous. Lots of Hellboy. Judge Dredd. Now we start getting into the 112 Collective. These are all of the um, unlicensed in house properties, the Gomez, Rumble Society stuff. Moving down here into the licensed stuff. It's odds and ends. More Twilight Zone. All the Hot Toys Predator stuff. More X06. So, you can see Star Trek is a big theme. Including all the Playmates. This is where most of the 112 Collective is, although I will show you in a minute. The DC and Marvel stuff, which is in the center of the room. Whew. All right, so that gets us through silver. We get into brown. So you ask, what could brown be? What can brown do for you? Well, brown would be historical Western military stuff. So up on top, again, you're going to see that double wave. The double wave is a whole lot of 12-inch figures. Those are all miscellaneous uh, Western guys, military guys. You're going to see a lot of vintage in here. Carl May, Lone Ranger. This is a lot of 70s stuff. 60s and 70s, the Mark's Best of the West. Big line for me when I was a kid. Oh, there's a vintage G.I. Joe to start it down there, but these are all military and Western figures from movies and TV shows, not historical necessarily. Even Hogan's Heroes. Great Zorro down there in the end. And more boxed and carded vintage stuff. 
which when it came to Western lines, I am a huge fan. See, we got the Ready Gang play set down here. We got one of the play sets from uh, Lone Rangers up on top. We're going to have more military. We've got Lone Rangers, Sundance Kids, Zorro. Back to the Futures over here because it falls into that science fiction line too. If you're a fan of uh, the old Lone Ranger line, from Gabriel, I've got almost all of that as well. There's a couple of the dress up outfits I'm missing. Saiso did some terrific uh, Civil War figures. So there's a lot of military in here. The tank up on top, Jeep on this line. So yeah, there's a lot of Western and military. Come around this side of it, you get more of the Western and military stuff. There's more of that Ready Gang, finish all that off. FDR watching over his. So I know I'm going through all of these lines pretty fast. If you have questions, if you see something and you think, wow, what is that figure? Just let me know in the uh, comments. I'll be happy to explain. There's the Little Legends of the West. That was the four inch line from Excel and Empire. Mark's Presidents. Another Star Trek line, so now we're getting back as we go around this huge set of winding towers we're getting back into some of the science fiction alien it's a bunch of different astronauts a bunch of different star trek there's plenty of prototypes mixed into this stuff i haven't been going through them all there is a prototype gene roddenberry that was never released that palisades had planned on doing for example lots of that kind of stuff mixed in there's another one down there that's a two up from the uh aliens play set they did and as it, there's a lot of the four horsemen stuff as we get over here we're going to get back into a lot of aliens and predators and a variety of six seven inch scale figures and of course planet of the apes a big science fiction line that i am quite a fan of So as you can see, we got mixed in there some spawn. And then we got some Star Trek bleeding over onto this side as well. On the bottom, we got some of these framed Masters of the Universe classics posters. See more of that in a minute. So that's Western and uh, military as we move out of the science fiction and uh, miscellaneous. And now we get to the orange section, horror. Dun, dun, dun. One of my favorites. The horror takes up two walls. Big set of the corner here. You're going to see a lot of uh, Universal Classics. Big fan of Universal Monsters. There's a nice mixture of, vi of different busts and statues and figures. There's a nice mixture of scales. Of course, my favorite scale is always going to be six scale. Buffy is here with the rest of the uh, horror stuff. Some more busts along here. Can't wait to get that new Beetlejuice from Sideshow. Let's go next to that one over there. And in front, another one of the big towers. Some quarter scale up on top. Premium format creature. Some box stuff. Complete collection of gremlins from NECA. Along with a variety of 7-inch scale horror figures. A whole ton of them. This is the 12-inch zombie shelf. We have the zombie apocalypse currently occurring. And more in that six to seven inch scale there's stuff here from any ca of course but also mcfarland and soda or the monsterizer that's one of the newest things i've added to the collection
Oh, now, there are individual videos of a lot of this stuff. I'm going to do another individual video uh, for each section. So don't worry if you're not being able to see everything. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the scale. Uh, here we get into the black and white section. Good and evil, light and dark, Star Wars. Up at the top, we have all kinds of troopers. Around 70 of them up there on a double shelf. In this section, you're going to see the, the gentle giant busts as well as a lot of Hot Toys um, six scale figures. I've done collection videos on those as well, so you can see them more specifically. There's a dehumidifier. Like I said earlier, dehumidify. Make sure you get that humidity out of the air if you want to keep your pleather the problem is a lot of times with pleather, that glue, as it gets too dry or too humid, breaks down. And there is nothing you can do about that. There is no protectant in the world you're going to put on the outside of that pleather that's going to keep that from happening. Humidity. On this side, we have some of the Sideshow and Hot Toys Beasts from Star Wars. We're going to go around to the other side, and you're going to see some of the play sets or dioramas that they did. A lot of hot toy or hot toys. A lot of uh, Hasbro Star Wars Black. And on this side, up on top, there's some of the Sideshow Premium formats, some of the Hasbro and Sideshow Six Scale. But here we have some of the really cool uh, dioramas that Sideshow has done: Jabba's Palace. With the corner, Yoda's hut, corner of the cantina, nice stuff. Looks a lot better out of the box than it does in the box. Kota Bakia did some of these cool statues. I have several of those. My favorite, I think, is down here on the end, the Bosque. They did a really nice job on him. Didn't really finish off the horror over here. We've got a lot of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer on this side, as well as uh, a lot of the Evil Dead stuff from Palisades and the uh, McFarlane, the smaller Walking Dead stuff. Other side of the zombie apocalypse. And here we have a lab situation. Johnny Depp's working with uh, Dr. Frankenstein there. And the playset for Buffy. And way too many of the Buffy figures. I might do a separate video on the Buffy figures because they are really, I, I've done a Buffy collection video, but uh, the Buffy figures are a great collection to get involved in. Oh, speaking of military, there's a little bird helicopter with a pilot and rider in it. Let's see if you can see it better from over here. Remember I said I didn't put any tops on the center here. That way I can look through the center of the building and see everything. And I have room for a couple more um, towers if I really wanted to put them in. All right. Whew. Two more sections, purple and yellow, and they're both cartoons. The purple section houses the Muppets collection from Palisades. This is one of uh, those collections that I have a complete carded set. All still on the card. I have almost a complete loose set. The only thing I do not have loose in my Muppets playset is the wedding set, which seemed kind of silly to get one just to open because it's really the packaging that matters. And the white tuxedo Rolf. I would like to get a loose white tuxedo Rolf someday, but almost all of them are already in the bag, and I hate opening something like that that somebody else would really, really, really appreciate having still in the package. You know, to buy something like that and then open it up seems kind of like a crime. Wallace and Gromit and Scooby-Doo, Chicken Run, lots of unusual uh, cartoon stuff here. You're going to start to see some Simpsons stuff. We'll hold on going down that way yet. 
But like I said, most of this is the Muppets over on this side. And then we're going to get into all kinds of cartoons in the purple section. Everything from Futurama. Ren and Stimpy. And again, like I said before, I like collecting prototypes. So if you have a sharp eye, you might see things like Kowalski there, who was never produced in the Palisades Ren and Stimpy line. Got the Tick. If you're into uh, prototypes, make sure you check my must-see videos. They kind of highlight some of the prototype items in the collection. I like to keep even older stuff. I like to keep some of it in the box so that you can see what the package looked like. Fairly Odd Parents, South Park, Invader Zim, and a little more modern. We have Rick and Morty. Come around here and we're going to start to get into the Simpsons. There's a bunch of towers of Simpsons. I've done a collection video, I believe, on all of that. So if you're interested, this is the only other line in the collection that I own. That is, I have a complete collection carded. It is also the only one I have that not only do I have a complete carded collection on display, but I have a complete loose collection on display. So for those of you who are really into The Simpsons, this is the section. When I get around to videotaping each of these sections individually, you'll really want to check out. It's not just The Simpsons over on this side. we got quite a bit of Disney and Pixar stuff, too. At least a few shelves of it. And uh, my Simpsons collection is not just World of Springfield. You'll see the reaction figures there. you see the McFarlane figures. Peanuts. The yellow wall itself is all Simpsons stuff. With one exception. So, you'll notice that there's the... There's Simpsons uh, statues and busts, all kinds of food items. Simpsons, the wild thing about Simpsons is they made so many different things with the license on it that it's just incredible. But the one thing that is in here is American Dad. It's the only American Dad thing I have in the entire museum. But it fit perfectly on that shelf with the rest of the bendies for the Simpsons. It evened it up just perfectly, and so it ended up over here. I will show you the other side over here. This window is the only one with a curtain that's themed. Got the Simpsons header curtain on there. And we'll go around to the other side just so you can see. On the back side, Venture Brothers, Family Guy, King of the Hill, Shrek, just about any kind of DreamWorks, Pixar, movie, and up on the top, we finish off the rest of the carded and boxed World of Springfield. Whew! Well, that's not the end. That's the outside. In the middle, we have three towers. This one houses Ghostbusters on the top two shelves, cars on this shelf. Now, one of these days, I'm going to get rid of the cars, I swear. And yet, I still seem to pick one up here and there. Way too many of these things, but they're so cool. Ghostbusters. Another license that I absolutely adore. Figures from Mattel and Hasbro and NECA. Playmobil. And, of course, around the side, you notice that on top is the Blitzway figures and uh, Ecto-1. Along with that tower, there's two more in the center. Oh, I said I would show you the uh, 112 Batman, or DC in uh, Marvel. That's on the second shelf. Up here on the top is the, sort of the Iron Man, uh, Tony Stark lab setup, where we've got a variety of Iron Man costumes, 
Tony Stark in a few different costumes, uh, you know, uh, uh, stages of wearing the armor and developing the armor, the gantry, the big Hulkbuster. There's that bat wing up there. And at the bottom, the next shelf down, is the DC 112 Collective. I am missing the very first Toy Fair Batman and the Black Mask Batman 2-pack on the DC side. I am complete on the Marvel side. 112 Collective is a collection I would like to complete someday. But every so once in a while, they screw me again. The, the recent uh, Red uh, Vex, the goat version, I missed that one. Got the first Vex, Bartholomew Vex, but not the second. So that leaves me with another one I got to pick up. Various Batmobiles, various Lego is on the third shelf of this one. More Lego on the floor. And on this shelf, we have another whole shelf of cars, as well as the floor where we got some of the cars. But this is mostly the Masters of the Universe classics. Box stuff down here, two whole shelves of it, some of it hanging from the ceiling, along with the uh, ball rug. I love the Master Masters of the Universe classics. I need one figure to consider myself complete. That is the uh, uh, Skullcon. I have the vehicle, the Rotar. However, I bought it loose and complete without him for a song. So I have to pick him up still. So like I said, there's two shelves. That one figure go with his vehicle up there, is all I need to feel complete. I say that because I am missing the very first um, figure from the line as well that came at San Diego Comic-Con, which, as far as I'm concerned, since we got even other versions later, I'm not really worried about. For those of you who do Detolfs, I have two of them that I bought early on. I threw in some of my cartoon stuff in there. Monsters, Inc. and Kung Fu Panda up here on the top. A lot of Warner Brothers in one of them, including some vintage Warner Brothers. Oh, a couple of Avatars fell over. That's what I hate about these. One of the things I hate about these details, getting things to stay standing on the, on the glass is ridiculous pain in the neck. If you were wondering if you would do an, a setup like this with Detolfs, it would take about 350 Detolfs to have the same storage that I have on these shelves. So there you have my relatively brief, I'm sorry if it took so long, you've wasted almost 40 minutes on this. But that is the sh quick walkthrough. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. And what I'm gonna do next is walk through each week, I'll do one section for oh, 11 weeks and talk about uh, more detail of what's in each section. Until then, actually until Friday when I do another acquisition report, have a great week.